Recently, there's been a lot of news about changes in America's financial situation, especially regarding bank loans and mortgages. This has led to growing concerns about a financial crisis. In this video, we'll explore the reasons behind this financial panic and offer advice on how to stay safe during the crisis. Right now, the United States is experiencing a recession, which is causing businesses to fail, increasing unemployment, and reducing the country's overall income. Recessions are a normal part of the business cycle, even though they can be tough. The length of a recession can vary. For example, the U.S. had recessions in 2007 and again in 2020. The financial world is unpredictable, as seen in the back-to-back -back recessions in 1980 and 1981. Experts think that the current recession could be worse than expected, with the economy possibly dropping by 30% to 50%. Uh, the recession is going to be worse than analysts expect, and the bottom is going to be lower than analysts expect. It could go down easily, go down 30%, and it wouldn't shock me if it was down 50%. You're looking at, you know, S&P, you know, 2,000, 2,100, something like that. Each financial crisis is different. Some lead to big losses, while others have less impact. Jim Rickards points out that it's hard to predict the severity or duration of a crisis. Sometimes a financial crisis happens during a recession, which can be disastrous. An example is the subprime mortgage crisis from 2007 to 2008. During this crisis, the expansion of mortgage credit led to a housing bubble burst in the U.S., causing a sharp fall in house prices. This affected many people, leading to lost homes, savings, and jobs. And since the U.S. is a key player in global trade, this crisis impacted the whole world. We've been talking about recession, inflation, deflation, but the one thing we haven't spoken about yet, and you kind of just referred to it, is there a global liquidity crisis coming? Since there was no recession, the economy was fine in 1998, but the, the financial world almost came to an end. Uh, sometimes they come together, and that's what happened in 2008, and we may be looking at a scenario like that. In simple terms, the 2008 economic crisis had a massive impact on the world, causing over $2 trillion in global economic loss. This kind of crisis hadn't been seen since the Great Depression in the 1930s, which was a time of major bank failures and big drops in trade and currency values. In 2008, industries all over the world saw a decrease in production, credit markets stopped working properly, and the prices of basic goods went down. Economist Jim Rickards warns that we might face a similar situation again. He points out that in 1998, even though the economy was doing well, the financial world almost collapsed. A similar crisis happened in 2000. Now, there are signs that another big financial crisis could happen, possibly as bad as the one from 2007 to 2008. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss the new videos. Thank you. These signs include a decrease in global trade, with the World Trade Organization predicting it will get worse in the coming years. Also, the amount of goods being made is going down every day, and more people are losing their jobs. Additionally, the U.S. has the highest interest rates it's had in 15 years, as the government tries to control inflation. However, the high cost of goods and services is still a big problem for people's earnings. You can come back to that, but, but okay, so the inflation sort of came out seen in mid-2021, uh, you know, in the summer 2021, by the fall, it was very high. And this is when Jay Powell was saying transitory, transitory, transitory. By November 2021, he threw in the towel and said, OK, it's time to retire the word transitory. And then they started hiking rates in March. On March 1st, the policy rate, the Fed funds target rate was zero. Today, it's four and a quarter percent. It's going to go up another 50 basis points on December 14th. If you're wondering whether the U.S. is facing a combined recession and financial crisis, the recent events in American banks provide clear evidence. In just one month, five major banks have faced serious problems. First, Silvergate Bank, also known as SVB, reported a huge loss of $1.8 billion in March 2023 and was downgraded. Many wealthy customers withdrew a total of $42 billion in just one day. By March 10, 2023, the bank, which was worth over $5 billion in 2022, declared bankruptcy. Then, Signature Bank, 
a New York City-based bank focusing on real estate, private equity, and cryptocurrency, was taken over by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, just two days after SVB's collapse. Another bank, First Republic Bank in San Francisco, which served tech startups and offered wealth management, had given out more loans than the deposits it held. It was seized by the FDIC on April 28, 2023. Credit Suisse, a major global bank and the second largest in Switzerland, also collapsed in March 2023. It was bought by its rival, UBS, for $3 billion. According to financial expert Jim Rickards, the combined losses from these banks' failures exceed $200 billion, causing public alarm about the stability of the financial system. To calm the panic, the Federal Reserve, the Fed, took several actions. It provided emergency loans to struggling banks and hinted that it might stop increasing interest rates soon. To restore trust in the banking system, the FDIC, along with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, assured customers that they would be fully compensated for their losses, even beyond the usual insurance limit of $250,000. President Biden also reassured Americans that their deposits were safe. The interest rate for the bank term funding program was 5.44% as of August 7, 2023. Jim Rickards suggests that the total loans from this program could surpass $1 trillion. These events have caused confusion and concern among bank customers and raised questions about whether the government is introducing new policies or just reacting to the crisis affecting a few major banks. The FDIC and Sheila Bear and others guaranteed every bank deposit in America. They didn't have to do that. We had a $250,000 insurance limit, but some, you know, small business might have a million dollars in the bank. So they were pulling the money out of the bank. So Bernanke said, forget that. We're, we're guaranteeing, regardless Guarantee of size, everything. guaranteeing everything. This bank. was in 08, right? 08, correct. I remember I was in London and I was concerned about my deposits. Yeah. And I remember I had some money in RBS and I called them up and said, get my money out. And they said, you have to come into the branch. The US government is facing a big challenge with its banking system. The problem is that U.S. banks have lost more than $700 billion that they haven't accounted for yet. If the government keeps using its own money to help depositors who are taking their money out of the banks, the banking system could fall apart. People are starting to worry about whether the banking system is safe, despite the government's efforts to reassure them. The current situation is similar to the 2008 financial crisis, but it's not clear if things are getting better yet. The 2008 crisis started in 2007, with HSBC announcing unexpected mortgage losses. This led to a series of events, including the failure of big financial institutions like Bear Stearns, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the closure of a Société Générale money market fund. The crisis got worse in September 2008, when Lehman Brothers, one of the biggest banks, went bankrupt. This shows how a financial crisis can grow over time. Our current crisis is only about a few months old, but has already caused five banks to fail. I wanna convey that it's very indicative of what the whole economy is like. So there's its particular situation and the Fed coming in and guaranteeing all depositors, but it's a common situation. It exists pervasively. And what is it that I'm talking about that there has been a lot of creation of debt to make investments the current financial situation is worrying, and it could get worse quickly. Financial expert Jim Rickards warns that today's technology could speed up a crisis. For example, if you hear about a bank like Silvergate crashing, you won't go to the bank to close your account. Instead, you'd probably transfer your money to a safe account using your phone, which can be done in seconds, no matter how much money you have. This means that people can now quickly withdraw their money from banks, making the situation more unstable. Rickards also thinks the panic will spread faster than before, as people remember the 2008 crisis and have already started moving their money into safer assets like gold. He suggests that people are losing faith in the government's ability to handle the crisis, which is now affecting the US dollar, the world's main reserve currency. Countries like China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, and Iran are starting to use the Chinese Yuan instead of the dollar for international trade. This could be a sign that confidence in the American government is weakening. Rickards believes that the U.S. Treasury will soon need to borrow more money, 
and he predicts more bank failures and a deeper debt problem. The government's attempts to fix the situation might make things worse. Rickards advises that one way to protect yourself is to invest in gold, which he considers a safe asset during financial crises. He mentions that some U.S. Congress members have introduced the Gold Standard Restoration Act, aiming to link the dollar to gold. Rickards recommends buying gold bullion, like bars or coins, as a way to secure your wealth. He suggests researching carefully, especially when buying online, to avoid scams. You may forward this video to your friends and family members on your favorite social media so they can benefit. We advocate that you watch our next video to help you speed up your success step by step. So, go ahead, click this, and get on the faster track. Until next time, happy investing. Your views are important to us. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below.